Good morning, everyone. Hi, this is uh, George Love with Land Tech, and uh, thank you for attending uh, this webinar about teams this morning. Um, I just want to um, just a little bit about Land Tech. Uh, most of you guys know who we are. Uh, we are a regional managed service provider offering support and services in central Missouri over the past 21 years. Uh, we offer several different types of services um, for uh, security, help desk, but uh, a couple of things. First, for housekeeping, we have everybody muted uh, so we don't have any background noise. Uh, there is a question and answer window available for you to ask a question, and we are going to um, wait to answer those questions at the end of the presentation uh, so we can get them all answered. And uh, a lot of times when we have a question, a lot of times that we find that it uh, gets answered throughout the presentation anyway. Um, we will have contact information uh, at the end of this webinar on how to get more information. So again, a little, about, a little bit about Land Tech. Um, our core service offerings include security. So we manage security. Uh, from the firewall to email security protection, uh, those type of things for your network. Uh, we do a lot of help desk support, 24 by 7. A lot of people don't realize we have 24 by 7 support available for on-site and remote. Uh, we do quite a bit of consulting, uh, solutions and strategy and planning, which we'll talk a little bit about uh, that today. And then um, data recovery and backup services. So we are uh, pretty key and that's, that's, we consider that a security item as well. So what are we discussing today? Um, one of the things that uh, we have run into, and ever since the pandemic hit in our area early last year, most companies have pivoted their strategic planning to involve more work from home abilities. Um, as time went on, part of those discussions revolved around new tools that allow for better communication and collaboration um, as a way of for your employees to connect and work with one another. Uh, we're going to be providing an overview of Microsoft Teams uh, today. Most of you guys have heard me talk to you guys about Teams and the industry is going. And we're going to be bringing in our continuing education partner, Centric. Um, Centric has been with Lantech, uh, Lantech's continuing education partner for the past 20 years. Uh, they have been instrumental in our success, adopting new technology and continuing to help us develop our skills for supporting and securing your network. Uh, I want to introduce Justin Ruby from Centric. I've been working with Justin over the past year explaining how I see Microsoft Teams use evolving with our clients and how they can leverage Teams to increase communication and collaboration capabilities with everyone in the organization. So, uh, Justin, do you want to take over? Yeah, thank you, George. Uh, how do you not love George Love? <laughs> great, great guy and, and a great partnership. And George, thank you for the partnership, uh, the continued partnership for over, uh, for close to 20 years. I've been with Centric for 12 and LAM has definitely been instrumental in, in some of the success that we've seen here at Centric. So thank you for that. For those of you not familiar with Centric Training, we are the Midwest premier IT training company we have been in the Kansas City and St. Louis markets for 31 years. Um, St. Louis, not, uh, not that long. St. Louis, actually, we entered that market back in 2017. So um, found an opportunity for us to expand and grow and, and chose St. Louis. And it's been a, a huge success for us. We do serve a nationwide audience and, and also have been known to train internationally as well. Um, we're a Microsoft Gold partner as well as CompTIA, EC Council. Um, we have several professional development type classes um, and the list kind of goes on and on from there. So before introducing the speaker, I'd like to encourage all of you, as George had mentioned earlier, um, to ask questions throughout the session. We have our expert here, Nate uh, Chamberlain, and um, he'll do his best to get to all of your questions here at the end of the event. So, and before we actually get to those, um, We'll come back on and, and talk a little bit about some of the recommendations Centric has around uh, Microsoft 365 adoption um, that George can assist and his team can assist you through, you know, how to obtain those types of services and stuff like that. So, um, but without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Nate Chamberlain. Nate is an incredible instructor. We're very happy to have him on our team. He's um, joined Centric in November as a Microsoft 365 specialist, 
and he is a Microsoft certified trainer. Um, he's been awarded the Microsoft MVP for two years running for his um, contributions to the technical community out there. He most recently co-authored an exam, MS 700, which helps prepare um, readers for their M365 Teams Administrator certification, which is something that um, Lamb Tech's team um, would probably definitely try to get uh, to attain for their customers. So, um, Nate, it's all yours, and and thank you for joining us today. All right, thank you so much, Justin and George. Let me switch my screen share here just real quick so you can see everything. All right, so yeah, today we're talking about Microsoft Teams 101. This is going to be introductory, uh, but hopefully also give you some new ideas, even if you've been using it a while, on ways that maybe that usage can be expanded a bit. All right, so Microsoft Teams, of course, is an app that's part of Microsoft 365. It helps us meet, chat, and collaborate from anywhere. Uh, the nice thing about that, it means that you can start on your computer, finish in a browser, take it onto your phone. The conversations continue, the content continues. All right, so I'd just like to get started with a brief video from Microsoft on what is Microsoft Teams. It's less than a minute, but it'll kind of set the tone for the rest of our talk today. Microsoft Teams is a hub for teamwork. It's an app that helps you pull together a team and work together using chat instead of email and channels instead of just file folders. It's a workspace where you and your team can securely edit files at the same time and see likes, app mentions, and replies with just a single tap. It's a place that your team can make its own by adding notes, websites, and apps. And because it's in the cloud, it lets everyone work together, no matter where they are. It's a solution that understands that having fun doesn't just make you and your team more productive. It makes you all more creative. Learn how to use Microsoft Teams to connect and create in brand new ways at office.com slash training. All right, so uh, just some keywords that we heard there, there's connecting and creating there at the very end. Um, that's certainly what Microsoft Teams helps us do is, especially in this you know, digital era where COVID has forced us to work in new ways, we're still able to connect and in some ways, in better ways than we previously were. Um, and you'll see some examples of some of those things that have really empowered us to connect in new ways with a little bit of fun along the way. All right, so Microsoft Teams is basically split into two different uh, factions here. We've got the collaboration side and the communication side. So on that collaboration side, we're talking about teams and channels um, and all of the apps that kind of bring everything together into one working space where we're actually going to work. We're not going to consume or download or uh, do things on our own necessarily, but we're going to a shared digital workspace in Microsoft Teams uh, to check things off our checklist. Okay, and then our communication is the meetings, the chats, the calls. So the more traditional um, M365 app, thinking about like Skype for Business, you know, from uh, years past, of course, where we're, we're doing the one-on-one -on -one chats, we're doing the group chats. Uh, maybe if you had telephony set up, you're using actual phone numbers. And if you didn't, you were using uh, voice over IP. Uh, so we're going to talk about both today, starting with just uh, chatting and collaborating. So like I mentioned, uh, Teams has Teams and channels, and we'll talk about what those are in just a little bit. We're going to cover IM and chat. Uh, we will go over voice and video calls, not necessarily hosting, but how your meeting experience as an attendee looks and what you can do there. Uh, we'll just know as we go throughout that security and compliance is central to everything we're talking about, meaning that any data that you create or send through Microsoft Teams is encrypted from creation through transit to its destination. Um, so that's a really nice feature, and especially with our meetings and calls and everything, knowing that you know, out of the box, we don't have to worry about additional things there necessarily. Um, and then remote collaboration and distance learning. So just like we're doing right now, a lot of us are at home, some of us may be in the office, you know, in a conference room or something, but we're spread out all over the place. Uh, and Microsoft Teams brings us together, whether we're using a webcam or whether we're just tuning in, uh, you know, for the feed, uh, we're brought together, we can have chats, those kind of things. All right, so let's start with uh, what are Teams and channels. So our Teams are uh, built on Microsoft 365 groups. And basically, I think of Teams as a bucket of permissions. So um, it's a group of people who share content, uh, they share ideas and apps, things that they need to work together. 
Um, they've also got the, the channels, which is kind of an extension of a team where I've got that base permission group where people are coming together to work, but the channels divvy it up into topics then. So big bucket and then focused areas. So your, your team may be something like sales and then your channels may be uh, one channel per client. Your channels may be, you know, one for best practice, one for, you know, um, let's see, maybe it could be performance over time. Uh, you know, it could be anything. There's no wrong or right way to organize your channels. Uh, but just remember, as we're talking through today, that when we're talking about a team, we're talking about a group of people. When we're talking about channels, we're talking about what's important to them that brings them together in the first place throughout the day. All right, so back to Microsoft 365 groups here. Uh, these teams that we're talking about can be public or private. And when we're talking about public private, we're not saying that anybody on earth can just hop into our public team. <laughs> uh, they certainly can, but there are permissions involved. It's not anonymous access. Uh, so uh, when you're creating your teams, which we won't really get into too much today, that actual process, we're talking more at a high level here. Uh, but when you are creating your teams, you're given the opportunity to make it organization wide kind of, which is public. Uh, and then private, where if you're the team owner, you're the one who's managing membership and people uh, can't just hop in if they wish to. And then for those private groups, those can be discoverable or non-discoverable. So it's two levels of privacy. Discoverable means, discoverable means that people can search for it, they can request to join, whereas non-discoverable, of course, means that it's hidden and you truly do have to make sure you're adding people to make sure those show up. Now, historically, we've been used to distrib distribution groups, security groups, and mail-enabled security groups where those distribution groups are basically just mailing lists or listservs, where we're sending an email, it's going out to a group of people. And then our security groups were those that enabled access to different resources. So thinking about your shared network drives, thinking about SharePoint sites. Uh, and then the last one there, mail enabled security groups is the combination of the two, where you could send an email to this group and it goes out to each member or, and you can use it for access to different resources. So Microsoft 365 groups, as we're thinking about it as the back end of Teams here, takes all of that one step further and it gives us resources out of the box without having to be added to each one. So traditionally with a security group, uh, if you wanted to have, let's say the equivalent of a planner plan, you would have to go to that planner plan, add access to this group. And then if you had like a stream channel or the equivalent of it, you'd have to go to that channel and again, add that group. Microsoft 365 Groups eliminates that need by already being connected and ready to go for those kind of resources as we're ready to use them. So let's talk about what we get specifically. So when we create this Microsoft 365 Group, which is automatically created when we create a team, we get a SharePoint site, uh, we get a OneNote notebook, we get a planner plan, we get a stream channel, we get all this stuff. Um, and then hidden, when we create a team for the first time, we also get the option to have an Outlook calendar and inbox. Um, now it's a little bit different if we're starting in SharePoint, uh, whereas or where the Outlook inbox and calendar is visible by default, and it's just a, a simple PowerShell thing your administrator can do to um, make that accessible if you started with Teams. Now we're not getting so much into that, but I do want you to know um, the apps that you get when you create a new group. So the process when we're creating a new team in Teams, that group is created, we get a SharePoint site in the back end for our file storage. So some people who are newer to Teams don't understand that uh, behind Teams is SharePoint, always. It's not something that you choose whether or not you're gonna use with it. You actually have to have SharePoint to support your team. Um, and you don't have to use the full SharePoint experience. Uh, SharePoint, uh, for those of you who are less familiar, is kind of like a, a website-like experience for your employees to share resources, uh, to come together, um, and it has some overlap with other apps, uh, but we're not talking so much about that today. But what's important is to remember that the SharePoint file management piece, the document storage in the background, that's the only piece that we rely on when we create a new team. Okay, and then just starting in SharePoint, very similar again, just remember that, uh, that Outlook difference there. Um, and one thing to keep in mind is that even if you do have an existing SharePoint site, if the site owner didn't create a team for it, uh, they don't have to. So whereas Teams always require SharePoint, SharePoint sites don't always require a team. So just in case you're looking for your team and you're not finding it. <laughs> All right, so online meetings, similar to what we're doing right now, but in Teams. So we can schedule and join, it's pretty basic, right? Uh, we can do multi-party, which is exactly what we're doing now, where Centric is meeting with Lamb Tech uh, and all of you from all of your different areas. Uh, we, we can meet on different devices. I'm using my Surface tablet slash laptop. 
Uh, you might be using your telephone and just joining on audio, or maybe you do have video. Um, it could be a desktop, it doesn't really matter. And take it one step further, you can have the app for Microsoft Teams installed on your device, or you could just be joining in the browser where you don't have to install anything. Okay, uh, we can content share. So just like I'm doing right now, sharing my slides with you, I can share my whole screen, I can share one application, it uh, doesn't matter. And then with these meetings and teams, we can record and publish those to something called Microsoft Stream. So I mentioned that earlier, just real briefly, that we can create a stream channel. That's something that we get the ability to do when we create a team. And it's already connected to that Microsoft 365 group we're already using. So it's super easy and convenient to get involved with stream. Um, and then we have that automatic transcription that goes with stream as well. So as we're uploading these videos, it's automatically going to go going to go and listen to that audio and create a transcript that's interactive. And then last, they're live events. So it's similar to what we're doing now, where there's a Q&A feature uh, and we can present one to many, uh, but the number of attendees grows exponentially from just a regular online meeting. All right, so going on from online meetings to IM and chat, so we're talking a lot about communication right now. We've got one-to-one -one chat, so that's just me and you. We're gonna have a, a quick discussion about something or try to get something worked out real quick. A uh, group chat, these could be persistent groups, ones that you're gonna chat with every single day. So maybe you actually formally name the group uh, or it could just be a one-time group. That doesn't matter. So persistent or one-time group, you've got guest access. So even if somebody doesn't work at your company, but they need access to your entire team, all the channels, the content, you know, the files, and they're gonna be able to chat with you, that's guest access. Okay, uh, file sharing. So again, remember in the back end of Teams is SharePoint. So when we're our file sharing, we're actually sharing through SharePoint. And then security. So like I mentioned, we have encryption start to finish. So we're not worrying about as we're sending files in chat. And then integration with other apps. Uh, so whenever we're uh, chatting, we have the ability to use other apps like Forms, like Stream inside of our chat so that we don't have to switch context so much. All right, so before we move on, let me just jump out to a demo real quick. Okay, so here we are in the web version of Teams, and I've just got a bunch of sample teams on the left. So just to kind of connect the dots here on the things that we've covered so far, we have Teams, uh, and we're on the Teams node right now. So it's just the main, the central piece of Teams. I say Teams a lot <laughs> in this presentation. Uh, so at the top level, those big buckets we were talking about, those membership engines, that's here. So market project team is a team. And then beneath that, those channels we talked about, those focus areas are listed, uh, kind of indented here underneath. So general, you're going to see on a lot of teams because that comes by default. Every single team you create also gets a general channel by default. You don't have to create that one. Okay. And then this one has design, digital assets, web, go to market plan, research and development. And that's where they go to have separate discussions, making sure that they're keeping these conversations focused in one area and not all over the place. So you can see as I click through these, there's different conversations. People are tagging each other to get notifications and attention. You can see meetings are happening in channels. And we're having research and development. Um, different apps are being involved here. So just like those chats we we're talking about bringing other apps, we're using Power BI. You can see Word and Excel, uh, images, doesn't really matter there. Uh, but anyway, that's Teams, Channels, and then Chat, which we just talked about last, is the second node up here. And so with that, we've got the groups. So you can see up here, I've got three uh, faces up here that I can see are in this group. Uh, and I renamed this one Webinar Team. So you can rename any group to anything you like if you're gonna be using it frequently. And you can see if I'm using these frequently, like sales team, Alex and Maude and uh, webinar team, I can pin these to the top. So the people I'm talking with and working with already all the time, I'm gonna pin those chats up here. And then everything else that's just maybe a one-off or someone I'm not gonna chat with so much, I'm just gonna let that stick down in the recent area. So you can see like I've got my Alex chat here. All right, so then the last piece there, the integration with other apps. So uh, check just goes a little bit further. So if you think back to like Skype days where we're just basically doing text, sending files, um, maybe also doing some meetings and stuff through Skype, we've got all of that still. We can do our rich text even, we can still send files. Um, a few different things in Teams are maybe the ability to mark things important or urgent. And when we do that, you can see that it gives us an additional uh, feature here where the person who's receiving it, so in this case, Alex, is gonna be notified every two minutes for 20 minutes. So it's helping us get the attention of Alex um, on something that we marked as urgent. 
Okay, and then we've got you know emojis. We could always do that. Um, GIFs. So our chats aren't just ways to you know exchange text and files anymore, um, especially when we're remote. You know, in times like this, a lot uh, it's hard to express ourselves adequately through text. So the the addition of emojis, uh, the usage of GIFs that might help express our feelings about something, <laughs> whether it's fun or serious, uh, and then also stickers. The ability to use memes, to use stickers, you know, fun or you know, maybe a little more professional. <laughs> uh, it's going to help get our point across, right? And with stickers, it's fun because you can use things that are out of the box. So here's a broccoli high five, um, or you can actually create your own. So you've got office drama, uh, these memes, anything with the pencil icon, you can customize. So there's popular memes that we're familiar with. We can uh, customize those. So Teams is so cool. Made my own meme. Didn't have to know anything about Photoshop or paint. <laughs> I just went in there. I clicked the meme that I wanted to use and added my own text to it. All right, so all those things help us express ourselves and bring us closer together as human beings and maybe bring that back that human element that we can miss easily if we're not uh, fully utilizing our toolbox in Teams. All right, so otherwise we're still scheduling Teams. Then those other apps, like here's Stream I talked about with videos. Uh, here's Praise, where if Alex has been doing a really great job, I can send him praise to let him know how I thought, you know, a recent project went or something. I'm going to just switch my Sorry about that. Okay, let me just reshare here real quick. Okay, sorry about this, everybody. Always got to be a tech issue. <laughs> there we go. All right, so um, here we are. So back on chat again. So we're talking about uh, this integrated app called Praise. And basically what we can do is we can tell Alex, okay, you've done a really good job with the recent project, or maybe you've done, demonstrated like a cultural trait that's really important to us as a company, you know, or whatever the case may be. This, these can be customized. But out of the box, I could say Achiever, and I could say, thanks. Oops. I'm having keyboard. Sorry, one that one. Almost there. I always have a backup keyboard. <laughs> All right. So basically, I just undocked everybody for those who are following my tech drama. <laughs> All right. So uh, for Alex, I'm going to say, hey, thanks so much for your hard work today. And then I can preview that. It makes a nice card. I'm going to send that in a chat. He's going to get that in the feed. And then it says, Megan sent praise to Alex. Now, I, everything we're learning here about chat can actually be applied to a channel conversation. So let's switch gears and talk about that real quick. So I'm going to go over to Teams. I'm just going to choose any channel that I'm a part of. And I can either jump in on an existing conversation or I can uh, start a new one. So let me go to reply to this first one. And you're going to see those same options we just saw in the chat, where I can have rich formatted text, I can attach, I can still use my GIFs and stickers. Nothing changed there, right? I can still do praise. Now, the reason I like to switch when I'm talking about praise is because it was nice of me to send Alex praise one-on-one, -on -one, right? But it's nicer when you're recognized in front of your peers. So that's when we start thinking about either group chats, where we could do something like praise for a better effect, or in a channel where there's many members, in this case, maybe there's 10 different members who are part of this channel or part of this team, um, and then when I send praise, everybody gets to see it. But the best part of it is then they can come in and they can reply to it and they can pile onto that praise and you can say, yeah, Alex, you're always rocking it. Thanks so much. Uh, and continue that conversation and make that praise a little bit more impactful. So praise is right there for this one. We can see that we can also do approvals. We can embed forms, so surveys or quizzes. And then it doesn't stop there. So in every chat and every conversation, we can add additional apps. So I'll just click on more apps to show you just a quick idea of what we're talking about. All right, so there's forms. We've got Poly, we've got YouTube, Power BI. 
Uh, so some of these are Microsoft, you can see, and some of them are third party. So MindMaster, uh, Survey, Monkey, Zoom is even an app that you can use inside of Teams, but it goes on and on. So tons of different things here that we can use again in our chats or our channel conversations. All right, let's hop back to our slides here. Okay, so why would we why would we use chat, right? And why would we use channel conversations uh, when we have out, you know, we have Outlook email, or maybe you're using G Suite or something for your email, but why do we make that shift or when would we choose one over the other? The best thing about using chats or using uh, channel conversations is that it reduces clutter. Because I don't know about you, but when I'm being kept in the loop on and off, like on reply all versus reply, and I get pieces of conversations here and there, it's really difficult to kind of piece it all together. <laughs> and before you know it, you're being asked something that you know nothing about. So with chat and channel conversations, they're persistent, meaning that they're going to keep going on. I'm going to close my computer for the day. And then um, let's see here. Oh, not shared for the slide deck. Sorry about that. Okay, is that better there? Yes, thank you. Awesome, thank you. All right, so uh, yeah, so reducing that clutter. So with the channel conversations, those keep going. I'm gonna close my computer, I'm gonna close the app. Everybody's gonna be able to see, um, you know, what the last message was that was sent. I'm gonna pick it back up on a different device for the next day and be able to continue that. Okay, and then uh, with the cluttering, um, think about all the times you're CC'd or BCC'd on something, but you don't really need to be a part of it. Maybe someone just wanted you to know about it, um, but you get an email anyway. So you either have to mark it as red or have a rule in place to move it or do something to reduce that clutter. But with chat and channel conversations, you can manage your notifications, which is what we're going to talk about next, uh, to say, you know, it's nice that I have access to this team or nice that I have access to this channel. Uh, but I don't really need to be a part of it. And when I do need to find some information or when I need to get involved with it, I can just hop in there and catch up from where I last left off. I don't need notifications every single time. So we're reducing clutter while opening up discussion. We're saying everybody should be a part of this. There shouldn't be a reply all on Tuesday, then a normal reply just one-on-one -on, -one on Wednesday. And everybody misses out on those things that are in between. We're trying to get everybody involved through the whole conversation. Okay, uh, from those chats, we can share our screen, we can start calls right away, and those messages are real time, meaning that as soon as I send it, you're going to get uh, that message, but depending on the notifications we're about to set up, you may or may not get a, an interruption or a notification. All right, and then of course you saw that we could attach files. So next up, like I said, activity, notifications, and settings. We're going to hop back out to our slides, or not our slides, our real environment here. All right, so in the upper right-hand corner of Teams, we can see our face. So right now I'm pretending I'm Megan Bowen, and I'm going to go to my settings. Settings is where you manage your notifications. So just as soon as I open that, I'm just seeing general settings, so I can change my theme if I want and go dark. Maybe that's easier in my eyes, or there's even high contrast there. I'm going to stick with default, just because that's what most of you will see at the beginning. Okay, and then I'm going to click on privacy. So uh, privacy is nice because uh, right now I've set my status to do not disturb. So as I'm presenting and we're recording this, uh, if someone were to message me, it's not going to put a, a flag up here that says, hey, somebody sent you a chat um, and show that first line or anything. So I don't have to worry about interruptions. But if you have somebody, let's say your supervisor, uh, who is sending you messages and you want to make sure that if they do, because maybe there's something urgent going on, that their message comes through regardless of your status, you can give them priority access. Just meaning I would say, okay, so if someone, let's say Adele, if Adele messages me, she can get through, but everybody else still block those during Do Not Disturb. It doesn't mean you're not gonna get the chat eventually or see the activity in a channel, uh, but it does um, just kind of modify that for you a little bit. Okay, and then you can block contacts if you need to. Um, the only other thing really that I talk to people about here is read receipts, and that's really up to you. Um, I know some people don't feel comfortable if they do have to open up a chat, but they can't respond right away. They don't want the person to feel bad by saying, oh yeah, I saw your message, but wasn't important enough to respond to. <laughs> so uh, just like in LinkedIn and many social media apps, you have the option to show those read receipts or not. So I usually recommend leaving this on. Um, and I do that because I think people are a lot more understanding than sometimes we give them credit for. And it's better to let them know, yes, I saw it, uh, and have them assume that you know something came up or whatever, than to have them wondering if you even opened it. So in a way, a reader see is a response saying, yep, I've seen it, and then hopefully I'll get back to them soon. 
All right, so notifications then. This is the big part uh, that we want to cover. So we've got um, an opportunity to get an email digest of everything that we missed in Teams. So let's say you had a PTO day or maybe you were just really busy and you couldn't get to everything. Anything that you missed, all of your unread activity can be sent to you in an email. So uh, by default, this is set to daily, but I could say change it to once every eight hours, once every hour, once every 10 minutes. You can see that, or I could turn it off if I want less email clutter. Okay, and then I have appearance and sound. So I've got the message preview and sound for notifications. So do you want that little pop-up banner where that shows you uh, the first line of the message maybe? So maybe if you work in HR or um, other sensitive areas, that's not such a good idea if you share your screen a lot or people are walking behind you a lot, maybe you don't want that to show up. Um, and then playing a sound. So you know if you are in a quiet setting working in the library or something, you can turn that off while you're working there. Okay, or just mute your computer. <laughs> All right, so teams and channels. So uh, you can choose if you wanna get activity. So uh, that's gonna be those notifications, but also, I'll, I'll come right back to that, but also there's a whole activity feed just for you up here. So as people are chatting you and having activity and channels that you're a part of, this activity feed is gonna grow. So you can see there's not a lot for Megan right now, uh, but what she has is someone added her to a team. So added her to this Contoso team. And then uh, someone mentioned a channel that she's a part of. So they said, great work this week, American Design Awards. And Megan's part of that. So she gets a notification. Okay, and then someone uh, replied. So in this case, it's an app, a forms app that's integrated with a chat or a channel. In this case, it's a general channel uh, for a team. So that's the retail team. I can see when I hover or I can see it in the notification. Um, but it just tells me that something happened there as well. So now I've caught up in all my activity. So let me go back to my settings here. And your options here for teams and channels is, do you want to get all activity? So new messages, reactions, all mentions. Or do you just want mentions and replies? So not necessarily every single thing that's happening that you're a part of. Again, thinking about clutter and how much you need to know. Um, or you can customize it. So if I choose one of these two, it's pretty simple. It's black and white. But when you customize it and you choose that one, you can choose, you know, do you just want the banner notifications? That's that little pop-up in the lower, lower right-hand corner. Um, or do you just want that feed? So just the little thing here that you can check once in a while and not have those pop-ups interrupting. Uh, but for most of these, you know, personal app mentions, team mentions, replies to conversations I started or replies to conversations I replied to. So if you got involved in one somehow, uh, but for all of them, you can choose banner and feed or only and feed. And for some of them off. So at least banner and feed or only and feed. And some of them you can even turn completely off to not get a notification at all. Okay, then down at the bottom here, so your differences in sections, it's all teams and channels, and then shown and pinned channels. So let's talk about that real quick. In our teams, um, I can pin channels. So you can see right now I've pinned the general channel of the design team. And if I wanted to pin research and development from the Marquette project team, I use its ellipsis and pin. So that's what it's talking about in the next section. So for the ones that I've pinned, do I treat those differently? Because they're obviously more important to me then I treat the rest or do I keep it the same? Okay, so I've pinned those. And then let's go back to our settings. All right, I'm in custom here. All right, so for those shown and pinned channels, um, all new posts, do I need to be notified every single time there's an activity? So again, banner and feed, only in feed or off. And then channel mentions. So when those channels that are important to me that I pinned are mentioned, do I treat that differently? Or again, just make it match whatever's up here. All right, so back. And then down at the bottom here, you've got chat, meanings, people, and other. So the rest of your notifications and your settings for those, very similar. Uh, but if you find as you're starting to work with Teams that you're getting too many, just remember to go to your settings, click on notifications, and then find the kind of notification you're getting that you don't want, um, or maybe the one that you'd like to have that's not coming. So very customizable. All right, so we already did a bit of a chat demo. Let's do calendars. Okay, so we went over chat, we did teams and channels, uh, we did activity. Your calendar is actually synced with your Outlook. So everything that's on Megan's calendar here also shows up in her Outlook. And uh, if she adds something here, it's gonna sync right away as well. Um, if I invite her to something or I have like a channel meeting, that can also be synced as well. So up in the upper right-hand corner, the main functions of the calendar are to do an ad hoc meeting, which means you and I need to meet right now. So I would click on this. And then I'm going to turn off my microphone so we don't get crazy feedback. <laughs> I'm going to click on join now. 
There we go. And then with ad hoc, nobody was invited by default. I have to now say, who do I want to meet with? So I would say, okay, Adele, throw that in there. She's going to get an invite that says, hey, can you hop in this meeting real quick? And then all of a sudden we're having a meeting. So that's ad hoc. Okay, let me go back to my calendar. So the other two then are meetings and live events. So we kind of mentioned this briefly as we were doing the introduction, uh, but your, your scheduled meetings, you know, those could be me and you, just a one-on-one, -on -one, just like our chats. It could be me to a group, or it could actually be for a whole channel. So that's one thing that's kind of nice here is in our teams, they each have individual membership. So market project team has a certain set of members. Our sales and marketing has a certain set of members. And um, all of those members of the team, remember the bucket that kind of runs the membership, have access to all of the channels underneath, unless you do a private channel, but we won't get into that. But it is an option to do a subset of members as well. But by default, your members of your team have access to every channel. So let's say I wanna have a meeting about research and development that's gonna show up in this feed. So if I scroll up, I might find one from the past. Here we go. So I can see in the research and development feed, there was actually a meeting called Market Project Sync. So to set these up, um, I can go up here on my channel and schedule a meeting or like we were on the calendar uh, tab over here. So let's just do a new meeting, see what our options are. This should look pretty uh, similar to Outlook where we just add the meeting title, we can add attendees. So this could be one off. So we could do Adele, but then you can add the channel. So if Adele, you know, for example, isn't part of one of these channels, I'm inviting the channel and then throwing Adele in there as well. So she, I'm not adding her to the channel, uh, but she's still going to be part of the discussion. Maybe she's guest presenting or something. So let's choose this American Design Awards channel. Uh, we've got Adele in there. We'll do test topic. Right, uh, date and time, pretty self-explanatory there. The biggest difference from Outlook is uh, we can't attach files here. Um, so if you want to do that, you'd have to do that in Outlook after you save this uh, and then send it out again. Um, and then the channel edition. So we can invite a channel instead of just people in groups. All right, so uh, with the scheduling assistant, that's going to work the same way as Outlook, where I can see uh, individuals that I added. It's not going to show me the channel attendees because that's a, a whole group of people. Uh, but for the individually added people, I can see, you know, are there any conflicts? If I have access, just like in Outlook, to Adele's calendar. All right, so I'm not going to send that one. I'll go ahead and close. All right, so the other option, that was a, a normal meeting. It could be on a channel. It could be one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, let's do a live event. All right, so live events look a little bit different. We've still got title, location, you know, all the, the normal standard stuff. The difference is that with live events, you don't have specific attendees. I could be the only person that's actually on this screen. Uh, and then when I'm finished, when I save this live event, I get a link that I can send out in an email or put it on a blog post or use in some way to invite everybody else to this live event. Um, but while I am here, you can see that me, Megan right now, uh, is the producer of the event. And I could add someone else, that's Anna Dell and she's automatically a presenter. So these are the two roles to be familiar with. Your producer is the person who's probably gonna be a little more techie, the person who's gonna choose the next speaker and make sure the content is all queued up and going live at the appropriate times. Whereas your presenters are just speakers. So you're inviting people to come and share their slides, share their thoughts, uh, be on camera for a little bit before you, um, you know, move it on to somebody else or some other topic. So producers and presenters, and then when I'm finished, when go to the next screen here, uh, you have different options. So it depends on your tenant settings, but you can do specific groups. So your live event could be me and a private group within my organization. It could be org wide, meaning you have to sign in with your company account to be able to watch the live event. Or it could be public, meaning that anybody on earth could join. And you'll see that's grayed out because for this organization and this demo tenant, uh, that's not allowed for Megan. Uh, so it could be allowed for some users and not for others, but by default for Megan, she can't do that. Uh, but that's probably one of the most useful features is to be able to do those public live events if that makes sense for your organization um, in your processes. So down at the bottom here, uh, for Teams, uh, you can do recordings, uh, which just means that after your event's done, you get a downloadable file that you can post on YouTube or send out to people. Uh, you get an attendee engagement report, which is cool, where you can see when people signed in, when they signed off, what their names were if they, if they weren't anonymous. And the last one here, you have to turn on uh, by default for this tenant, uh, but it's Q&A. So do you want people to be able to submit questions while you're presenting or while your presenters are presenting? Uh, and then you get a report afterwards as well of all the questions that were asked, those that were answered, and it gives you an opportunity to reach out and answer anything that you didn't have time for. 
All right, so let's go ahead and schedule that one just so we can see the last screen. There we go. So once you schedule a live event, this is where I now get that attendee link. So I just click on that. I've copied the link and I can send it to anybody, anywhere, social media, email, chat, text message, however I want to. All right. Close that one. So meeting experiences. So I'll go ahead and make that full screen so you can see it. Uh, when we're in a meeting in Teams, uh, some of these may seem familiar, especially like in Zoom, you can raise your hand. In Teams, you can raise your hand as well. Um, and it depends on your tenant right now because they're rolling out new features. So you may or may not have what I'm about to show you. Uh, but up at the top, when you're in a Teams meeting, you should see some buttons. Uh, the first one's just your participant panel. So the little people shows you who's in the meeting. Uh, the next one is the conversation, so the meeting chat. So uh, kind of like Q&A, but anybody can say anything. It's not just a um, submitted question. Maybe it's going to be posted. Whatever you chat is going to be shown to all participants in a normal meeting. Okay, and the next one is reactions. So uh, in addition to raising your hand, and if you look over here on the right hand side, you can see the options. But in addition to raising your hands, you can laugh, uh, you can clap, celebrate, you can heart or like something, or you can thumbs up. So what happens when you use these is during the meeting, your avatar or your, your profile picture gets that emoji on top of it, and it kind of like zooms in towards the camera a little bit, so it gets uh, whoever's presenting it, it'll catch their eye. Um, if you have your video, same thing. It'll just be over, like an overlay temporarily. Okay, and then the last button up there, the little square in a square, that's a breakout room. So the way that works is whoever's running the meeting uh, can divvy up the participants into different sections. And then at any one point, they can say, okay, go into your breakout rooms, have a discussion, come up with two ideas. Uh, when we're finished, I'll bring you back to the main meeting and we can discuss. So people use that for just like that example, brainstorming where, you know, go out, refine your ideas, bring it back for discussion. Or it could be something fun like digital trivia. So you and your trivia team uh, hear all the questions read, and then you're broken out into your teams for a private moment to discuss all the answers and agree on them family feud style. And then you're brought back to the main meeting where uh, you hear the correct answers. So likely in that situation, you would have submitted your answers on a, a Google form or a Microsoft Forms form or something. Um, so just a couple ideas for breakout rooms there. And then I mentioned in the beginning that SharePoint is the back end. So let's talk a little bit more about that. So when you create a team, you get a SharePoint site. We know that now. Okay, and those Teams files are stored in SharePoint. So in the screenshot you can see here, we've got the Teams or those buckets, and we've got the channels underneath. Uh, and then we see an open in SharePoint link. So what that's going to do, and I'll go ahead and show you this in a real environment. All right, so let me go to my research and development channel of my market project team that I'm picking out a lot. You'll notice that every channel has a files tab that comes by default. You don't have to add that one. So when I click on that, I'm actually looking at SharePoint. This feels like it's in Teams, right? Uh, but whenever you drop a file in here, or if I use this upload button, upload files or folders, or even if I create a new uh, document right here, this is actually SharePoint. And uh, Teams itself actually has no storage. It relies on SharePoint, it has to be in place. Um, so let me go ahead and click on open in SharePoint so you can see that backend for itself. Okay, so here we are in the SharePoint site for the Marquee project team. Remember this was created by default. Now from here, you can actually expand it and use other parts of SharePoint. You can create additional apps. You can have a robust website like Experience in addition to Teams. And any pages you can create in SharePoint can actually be pinned as a tab in your Teams channel. So you bring them back together to create one experience. Um, so if you find when you're working in teams that you're not having a very robust experience and it's lacking in its visual appeal or something, remember you can always create a page in SharePoint, make it beautiful, and then pin it inside of Teams so people can use it there. But we won't get too much into that. But let's focus on the files part here, where we have this research and development folder that we're in. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on documents, which is going to take me up to the top level document library for this site that was automatically created. And we're going to see a parallel. So here's that general uh, folder, and that general folder was created for, you probably guessed it, the general channel in the corresponding team. When I created a digital assets web channel, it created a digital assets web folder inside of SharePoint. So every single channel inside of Teams that you create gets its own folder for storage. Now, one thing to caution that I see happen too much is someone will go to their SharePoint site and they'll be like, well, general, what's that? And they forget that it's linked to Teams or something. 
Uh, so they'll come and rename this folder. But just remember uh, not to rename any folder that's used for Teams file storage, because if I did rename this to, you know, market project team files or something, uh, and then I go back to Teams, it's going to still look for that general folder and it's going to say it can't be found. And my teammates are going to be worried. <laughs> so don't rename Teams folder file names. All right, so back to Teams. I'm back in Teams on the Files tab. Um, I can see I'm in the research and development folder and I get the full functionality of SharePoint right there. So it's not just SharePoint being used for files. You can actually, like when you're doing the one-on-one -on -one chats and the group chats, when you're sending files that way uh, through a simple attachment, it's actually gonna use your OneDrive. So something else just to keep in mind as you're working uh, is that if you're not finding a file in SharePoint that you thought might be there, it could be that you send it in a chat instead of a team. So your one-on-one -on -one chats and your group chats will automatically create a folder in your OneDrive called Microsoft Teams chat files where all the files you're sending to other people are saved. So double check there if you're missing something. All right, so the last thing I'll share with you here is just that you can use Teams across all devices. So like I mentioned, uh, you can use your browser, you can use a computer, a laptop, doesn't matter, it's very responsive. But make sure you check the mobile app as well. Because personally, what I like to do is I like to have the chat for my uh, Microsoft Teams going on my phone, and then I can keep working in Teams without having to go back and forth. So here I am in Teams, and there's different things you can do. Like if you're in the desktop version, you can actually pop a chat out, uh, but in the desk or the web version, you're not able to. So uh, we're not going to get too much into commands or shortcuts right now, but in Teams, we can use commands, which starts with the forward slash up here in the command bar, to do different actions. And if you use the desktop version, not the web version, there's one that's pop and allows you to pop out a chat. But just like my situation right now where I'm in the browser, I don't get that ability. So if I want to chat with somebody, say, let's just say Alex, we'll pick on him again. If I want to chat with Alex while I'm working on something, let's say I'm working on a document or I'm filling out a form that's pinned to a team channel, um, I can't do both at the same time in Teams unless I have that pop feature or my phone. So I use my phone typically, I have it next to my computer, I'll have that ready for chat while I'm focused um, and intent on getting something done in one of my channels. So uh, one thing I, I should mention while we're here is that whole example of forms embedding. So inside of your channels, there's these different tabs and it should look really familiar because when we went to add an app for the chat, uh, a lot of these were the same options. So by default, our channels get the posts, the files and a wiki. But there's something else here called market project plan for this team. And what it actually is, is planner. So once that loads, let me get rid of this conversation pane. Uh, but when it loads, that's actually planner. So you can you know, drag your tasks from one bucket to another, you know, work on those as you want, and you can keep adding different tabs. So with that form example, um, I could choose forms and we'll choose an existing form to save some time here. We'll do a workshop registration and save. Okay, so with that chat plan example, I might be working on filling this out. And I'm worried that if I leave this to go chat with Alex, I'm gonna lose everything I've done so far, right? Um, so just keep that in mind that you don't have to use Teams in one experience, you could use it in multiple. All right, so with that, um, I'm gonna hand it back to George before we do Q&A. Uh, George has just ha has a little bit of a closing for us here. Thanks, thanks Nate. And I think I was gonna bring Justin in on this as well. Um, one of the things that we're seeing as, as teams evolve is, is a lot of these new features with channels, calendaring, uh, security, uh, the sharing of information and collaboration. One of the big things is understanding your organization of how you can uh, pivot and use something like Teams, whether it's the chat side or the collaboration side and understanding your organization and how that fits in. And, and one of the things is it just doesn't, like this team's one-on-one, it just doesn't stop here. It's got to, you got to have people and employees uh, in, in certain positions evolve with it and understand how to set that up, how to maintain and manage that, where it's, a, it's an administrative function rather than a technical function. And um, I've been working with Justin on uh, some, some processes, some things that we can do. So you're just not using the chat feature, you're using the full features of Teams and uh, this is going to talk a little bit about that. Um, we do have a, a question. Uh, so once Justin gets done, then we'll see if we can answer that question uh, about Outlook and Teams and security component. But this that's a real um, a, a good segue into why we need uh, 
people in your organization trained on not just using Teams, but administrating that, just like any other software platform. Yeah, thank you, George. And, and uh, this, I mean, if, if you're not, if you don't have Microsoft 365 right now, that, that's probably a pretty overwhelming um, demo on, on what you saw as far as the capability of Teams. And then if you have Microsoft 365, you may be saying to yourself, man, I, I wish we were that engaged in Teams today. And how do we do that? And, and um, that's where we partnered with LAM on having the right um, change management and adoption program to help get your entire company up to speed. And that starts through a subscription that you can talk to George a little bit more about some of those details and what that looks like. But um, with that subscription, um, there's you know discounted pricing that you get on what we call champions training. Usually each department will need at least one uh, champion that really understands the ins and the outs of um, the 365 um, ecosystem. Um, and again, those aren't technical people. Technical people are land tech. They're the ones who handle all the back end stuff and, and that kind of thing. So these are really kind of just tech savvy people, people who are really drinking the Kool-Aid of the organization, people that like to dive into new technologies and learn a little bit more about um, different software and, and stuff like that. And, um, and so through the adoption program we have in place, adoption and engagement is really probably the best words to use for that. Um, we'll be able to get your champions up to speed. A champion's not a full-time job. A champion is really someone that each department can go to as they're working inside all these different applications um, to get advice on, on what to do. But once those champions are trained, um, and brought up the speed on, on how this all works, either administrative point of view or from an end user point of view, then um, we roll out end user training to the rest of the organization. And those champions help us decide what that looks like. And as an ongoing effort in that subscription, you now have access to over like 5,000 titles um, in the Microsoft 365 ecosystem. So the key is, is, is is what is Microsoft 365 and how do we use it as an organization? And that's where the initial change takes place. Then it's, okay, what does each department need as far as you know which applications we should be using and how do we start interacting with all these applications, that kind of thing. And then from there, there's, there's ongoing um, self-paced training that is an added value to, to that instructor led. So um, I think, the way I um, read this with George and with Nate, we think the best plan of action is to try and set up a, a demo um, with George and myself so that we can talk to you a little bit more about what a migration uh, plan looks like, excuse me, not a migration plan, but what a, an adoption and engagement plan looks like for your organization. Um, all of this I know is, is very overwhelming, but you can actually be as involved as Nate was within a couple of weeks. And it's hard to believe that there's this whole new communication system out there that I can get my organization on board with, um, let alone get everybody using it the way that they should. And that is possible. And that's what we're doing with through our partnership with LAM. So um, I hope that's helpful to you. Nate, thank you so much for doing this today. I know we might have a question or two. And please, if you're still on right now, Ask any questions that, that you have on your mind and we'll definitely try to get to those. But for that, I'll turn it back over to George at Liam. Yeah, we do have a question. Um, someone asked, uh, when setting up calendar events through Teams rather than through Outlook, does it matter if you do or don't have calendar permissions through Outlook? Uh, will you still be able to see the calendar even if you don't have viewing or scheduling permissions? So uh, this works a little bit differently, and that's a great question. Um, but before you can even create um, a calendar item for a specific channel, you do have to be a member of the team that's associated. So you actually won't even be able to create a meeting um, unless you're part of that team. Now, as far as the Outlook Sync, it's gonna be the same thing. So if you wanna view a channel calendar or at least channel events inside of Outlook, again, you're gonna have to be a member of that team. Um, and they're, they're, it's a little bit different when we're thinking about M365 these days with the groups because uh, historically we're used to like that view only role where we can just consume but not modify something. Uh, with channels and with teams, uh, your members have edit or contribute rights by default. 
Now you can restrict that through team settings, which we didn't get into because it's more of a team owner responsibility, uh, but you can restrict that a little bit where you can make it really close to view only, but um, it's, there's no true view only, which we're kind of used to in the past. Um, and then just keeping, keep in mind, like all the associated resources are kind of the same. So uh, with Planner that we brought up and anything that's created because of the Microsoft 365 group or associated with it, the rights are the same. It's always members have edit slash contribute. Um, and then you have owners with full control to manage membership or delete the resource. Awesome. And um, to the attendee who asked that question, if you have any more questions about that or want us to explain it a little more in depth, um, we've got uh, George's contact information up on the screen. Um, he'd be more than happy to chat with you a little more if, if you need a little extra explanation. Um, oh. It looks like that was our um, only question on this end. Um, George, do All you right. have well, anything? And, and if you do have any further questions, feel free to reach out uh, to me. Um, just going back to what Justin was talking about and, and Nate alluded to was Microsoft 365 really is an ecosystem of all these different tools and applications and you know one thing uh, can affect another and they, they build off of one another and teams is the front end that's the structure that if you create this uh, in your organization and start utilizing uh, the teams the channels and, and those other applications on there it builds into tying into outlook and your email ties into yammer which is another another platform for social media or inside your organization um, these videos for uploading, um, when you're doing training videos, they can be uploaded into stream, the video service. And all this ties into uh, SharePoint. Some of you guys are using OneDrive. Uh, some of them are using Teams on the chat side of things, but it's, it's so much more than just a communications piece that um, you can build up a lot of efficiencies, but you have to have the training for that and, and understand your organization and how they can utilize each component of that. So. Uh, if you've got any questions or any, any, any concerns, reach out to me. Um, we will be touching base with, a, if, if you're one of our client of ours already, we'll be touching base with you um, later on because I know uh, we're going through the adoption process with some of you um, and uh, we just uh, continue on, on with that. So uh, if you have any other questions, just feel free to, to uh, shoot me an email or give me a call. And uh, thanks for attending. Nate, thank you. It's very informative as usual. Uh, Justin, thank you for the information on the training side of things. Um, thanks for attending. Thanks, everyone.